I felt better about the things that I did accomplish and therefore I got more stuff done. It seems so counterintuitive to me, but it involved, you know, trusting, trusting myself. And I think hello writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Son. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 142 of the podcast. And it's January 3rd, 2024, as we record mm-hmm. this. <laughs> Today, we had a uh, a request from a listener that we go over our year in review, kind of talking about mistakes we've made or uh, things that we are really glad we did, and then, you know, kind of slingshot that into 2024 and kind of um, set up a, you know, like goals, plans, just thoughts about uh, 2024 in general. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, We want to thank all of our existing patrons for believing in our work offline and here on the podcast. You can become a patron of the arts by going to patreon.com slash Valerie Isan for books, writing instruction, coaching, and planning, and patreon.com slash strange air stories for short stories in the paranormal mystery genre. Um, let's see announcements, um, still plug in that early, uh, excuse me, not it's the early bird registration is over. So we're, we're at the regular, um, registration for the 2024 writer craft writing retreat. Um, and again, there are only four private tickets left and there's a few shared ones. If you want to share a a unit with someone, uh, we will likely sell out again. So ValerieIsan.com slash retreat for more information. And that'll be in the show notes as well. Uh, the new anthology by Tsunami Press is now everywhere. You can buy books. So if you didn't want to go to tsunamibooks.org slash shop, then you could just go to any bookstore that you like and order it. Uh, and my essay eye contact is in there and it's getting rave reviews. <laughs> Rave. It's getting rave reviews. <laughs> um, Season of the Shadow is up now. It's been out for a couple months. You can go to where where can people go to to buy the Season of the Shadow? We're on Amazon exclusive. Um, print is taking a little longer, as one would expect. I guess everything <laughs> takes a little longer at this time of year. Um, but I should have the print version up in a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. So. Um, update. I just got back yesterday from a trip to the coast, the Oregon coast. We went to seaside, which I don't normally go up, um, that far North. We usually stick somewhere closer, um, Newport or Florence or something like that. But, but we wanted to go and meet some friends that were further North. They were in Washington state. So we were trying to find a place that was a little closer for them. So we could meet not halfway, but you know, it was a little easier on them to drive. Right. So that we did. Um, that That's was like, quite a drive for you from Springfield, right? I mean, you've it got... It was like a three-hour drive. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It Great. wasn't too It wasn't too bad. Um, what else did I do before we left? Um, I did do some thinking about um, January and like my, you know, I did my December monthly reflection and then looked to January and, and looked at, see what I kind of wanted to accomplish for January. That's about as far as my planning has gone. Um, and I think that's pretty much my, I think that's pretty much my update right now. I went on vacation, <laughs> did some <Yay>. reflection. <laughs> what yeah, about like you? That. Well, it's been a couple of weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, with some holidays smack dab right in the middle there. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I've been really hammering away on, um, book one and new series. Um, I wrote the, the reader magnet for that series. I've actually just, this is, I, I've mapped out the three books The you know, I've, I've mapped out a lot of the series and I've, I've started writing the new, the first book for it. And it's, it's been, you know, again, I kind of feel like it, I'm collecting a lot of old, old ideas and and putting them and giving them new life. Um, it's been a product of moving, I think, four months ago. Like I kind of moved all my archives from a house I lived in for 12 years. And I was kind of forced to look at it. And I was forced to decide what to keep and what to let go. 
And so when the idea of like maybe putting together a new series to, to write in tandem with my other series came to me, it was all fresh on my mind, just sort of these old notions that I'd been, you know, that I'd explored and, and, and set aside. So yeah, I've got, I think nine, eight, 9,000 words into a new story. Um, something I think has legs and, uh, Yeah. So I have a question about your story idea production team in your brain. (laughs) (laughs) I can just see them like working up there frantically in their cuticles. And when I see them, I picture like the elves from the movie Elf, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I picture what they're doing up there. So how do you, I mean, you have a plethora of ideas, which is not something that everyone struggles with. Let's just say that. So you've got all these ideas. How do you reconcile or do you, or do you have this problem at all starting a story and then not being interested in it and putting it down and picking up another story idea? Like, I think that some people, and I might even include myself in this, get a story idea and think, oh, yes, this is going to be awesome. And then by the time you like kind of get around to it, it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to spend a year working on this, but you know, (laughs) you know what I mean? Being with this stories exclusively. I think this was a real problem for me for a long time because I wanted, I felt like every idea was, uh, had to be actualized. And then I realized like that just can't work for me. It just can't. I don't, there's too many ideas that churn and that churn. And when I'm honest with myself, which is, I think, the key to anything, um, when I'm honest with myself, I'll sit down and start writing some of them. And it's like, all right, I'm forcing it at this point, or I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my phone, or I'm easily just dist- like when the story really pulls me in, and it won't let me go. Um, then I know to explore it. And I don't, so I, I know that's a really generic, like probably anybody who has this affliction would say the same thing, but there's just this kind of feeling I know I rec- I've learned to recognize that says, okay, you're you're really forcing this right now. You know, like this is not something you're gonna what you're you're gonna be able to fulfill. Um and then there's other things where the longer I sit with them, the more c- comes out of them. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I just keep these things just keep coming. Um and then it's just also this sort of pattern recognition in my own creative mind, I guess, where I've just realized that I've been noodling with certain ideas forever. Um, certain core concepts just keep keep coming back. It's like I'm trying. I've tried. I've tried looking at that story idea from this angle, and then that angle, and then this angle, and then I'll rec. I'll, I've learned to recognize, like, oh, hey, this is a story idea. You've this is this is something you've been really working on for a long time. Let's see what other approaches you've had. And oftentimes that just yeah, I don't necessarily go back to those old ideas, but it definitely gives me uh, a a baseline to start working. So that's a long winded way of saying, I think it's just understanding my own rhythm. And I just, tr- you know, I just trashed like three short stories that were sitting on my desk this last week. Just trash. I just knew they weren't. I'm never gonna I I'm forcing the story. I like the idea. But the longer I look at this idea, the more either I've forced, I've tried to force it to work. That's what I guess I'm resisting is I'm always resisting the, the, I'm going to force this thing to work. If it just starts, if it's working, if, if the story and I are working together, then I, then I know to pursue it. But if I'm working too hard to make that story happen, it's time for it to go. Well, that sounds all lovely and everything in theory, but we all know about like the soggy (laughs) middle and stuff. And sometimes writing is not fun. So <laughs> how do you tell the difference between, okay, this story is not working. I'm trying too hard. And okay, I need to buckle down because this is not working. And how can I make this more interesting? I need to, you know what I mean? Like, how do you, where's the, I, where do you cut I think bait? You just, <laughs> I think it's when I'm forcing that sort of, like when I'm either forcing the character or I'm forcing that. I, it's always the inciting, it's always the establishment, you know, the establishment of setting character and inciting incident. That's usually where the germ of a story starts for me is just right there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And that's where I'll sort of work off of it. What could happen if this, what could happen if that, um, still, you know, staying in that moment of Genesis, um, I'll start trying to pull strings and see where it goes. Um, I know that a story really works is when I I've without effort, I've gotten past that inciting incident. I'm already into the act two of the story and I'm still excited about what's popping up. Um, because you know you're, you're you're getting from inciting incident to resolution in a story that's 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 a story's arc mm -hmm. and if I, if i'm populating the middle of that if if i'm populating act 2 with exciting stuff i know it's going to work cuz act 2 is that like you said it's kind of the soggy middle of like well you know the icing's great the outside ring of the cake is fine but that middle is just not good um i don't know a bit there's just stodgy. a certain feel Stodgy, you're right. Oh God, I love the British Baking Show. Um, <laughs> claggy, I, just, I like yeah, claggy. Just, that's the one that's like, oh no, you don't want any clagginess. I don't know. It's like an airport conversation, right? Like, there's not every airport conversation is memorable, but when you're sitting down with someone, I think I know immediately. Like, all right, this person's great. This is a memorable conversation. Let's keep it going. Um, it's just, yeah, when that middle is coming for me, that's what happened with this series. I feel like we're going down a rabbit hole and I love it. But mm -hmm. I, that's what kind of happened with this story idea. Like I got this inciting incident. I got this, I got the, the, the establishment of setting and character for both villain and hero. And I started to like put the pieces together and I was probably, I don't know, I could grab the notebook that I was writing in. I was probably... 10 pages of handwritten notes and ideas before I looked back and said, oh my gosh, I'm like all, all the way through, almost all the way through an act, what feels like an act two. And that's supposed to be the hard part of the story to come up with. It's supposed to be the, you know, what do I do in act two? Well, if boy, when I was excited about act two scenes and developments, I was like, all right, this is, I'm going to be excited to write this. It, there's nothing in this that feels like I'm forcing it. And I think that's, I don't know, when an idea just takes on an energy and it takes me on a ride, um, let's go, let's go. Where are we going, idea? That's awesome. And I, the, there also is, and I'm not gonna pat myself on the back, but I think there is courage in throwing it away too. You just have to have mm -hmm. the courage to toss it and say, again, I was working on a story. I started writing this story. Um, I started writing this story at, the the day of Passover Seder. So it was like thanks. It was, it was um I was gonna say Thanksgiving. It was like in April. I've been just sort of noodling on this idea. And after all that time, I looked at it and said, I am so far from magic with this story. <laughs> it's time to let it go. There's just no magic left in it. So I don't know. I guess I want story has um, to feel magic. recognition for having done work that I'm now tossing. And and I don't need it from anyone else, really. I just need it from myself somehow. And I think I need to come up with some like momentary, like ritualistic, um, I don't know, phrase or, or just some sort of acknowledgement that I make to myself that, yes, this was a story idea I had. I tried to start it and it just isn't doing it for me. And it's okay to move on. And this is just writerly play or research or, you know, like acknowledge it somehow. My friend, Steve had us, um, he was talking about, we were talking about books that I start and don't finish, but I still want the recognition of having started the book. And so he came up with the books I have tasted list in my planner. Oh, so I, I want to have. It. You know, something like that with like, okay, that was a story idea that didn't work or I don't know. I mean, I don't need to write it down or anything, but just some sort of like, it's okay that this having, didn't go anywhere. I think having a respect for, I mean, it's sort of like Memorial Day, right? I mean, <laughs> Memorial Day is, right? You just have to just, I think there has to be, as a writer, there has to be a, a, a number of stories that didn't work. Yeah, I think that's just accepting that, you know, you have to, you have to write five in your head to get one that you're willing to, for me, this is sort of my math. Like I'll get five ideas in my head and what, maybe one of those makes it to paper and of three of them that make it to paper, one of those get finished and that I just have to be satisfied with that. And I, I think it's, but if I, 
I have to be satisfied with that because I also, on the other hand, trust the idea that I'll be walking my kid into basketball practice tonight and I'll get a flash of an idea in the lighting in the gymnasium and I'll be sitting there while the kids are practicing, writing down an idea for a story. Like I just, I have to, I always trust that there's no matter what I do when it comes to disposing of an idea that another one is going to pop up. There's just, that's never going to be the problem. I think that's what you should strive for is build a a couple that memorial that that memorializing with trust that like, Mm -hmm. this will happen. This will keep, this will, another one will happen. I think that's it. I think that it stems from a fear of I'm never going to have another idea. This one has to work. (laughs) And then when it's like not doing it, I'm like sad because I'm like, oh, no, it's going to be fallow time again. I'm not going to come up with another idea. I think just trusting and curiosity, too. You know, there was I was in the car the other day. It was like a kind of a cold, foggy morning. And, you know, I'm in this drowsy state and this car, this police car comes speeding from the direction I was going. And I remember like the first thought that went into my mind was what could be happening? Like what, like what is going on? Right. Mm -hmm. And the whole rest of that drive, I was making up, I was making up a story of like, where that, why that cop is driving so fast from that place. And by the time I got to my, I think I was going to my mom's house. By the time I got there, I was like, well, that's, I'm not going to, there's nothing to write here, but that's the thing that I'm trusting is always going to happen. I'm never going to, I'm just never going to look at a situation with a question and not want to answer it, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's part of what the story proposition is, right? Is that like, we're going to answer a question that the reader has or yeah. the character. We what got a subject there and we're not, I know. We're not even to the subject. That's I great. Know, I love it. I think it's great too. What? Are, so what are you reading? Um, I had to put, I, so here's the thing. I, I had a couple of like oddball books from the library mm-hmm. before the end of the year. And I have to, I had to keep this one because I, it's a Japanese name. Um, it's called ne- Nejishiki and it's a collection of like sixties, um, manga from like one of the early, like sort of manga artists from the, from the 1968, um, and it's just this really surreal, bizarre, um, uh, animated like dreams, and they're just they're like kind of post-war Japan. They're really bizarre. Like, I picked it up from the library, and because the cover looked really weird. And you see the cover. It, the cover. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a little boy kind of walking through a field of laundry that's being hung out to dry. Um, the dreams are all like I'm fascinated by Japanese culture. I'm not one of those people that like you know lives in in Manga Land or lives mm-hmm. in uh, Godzilla Land, but I just I'm very fascinated in the cultural differences and you know storytelling and especially where like horror and surreal things come in because there's definitely you know there's definitely some cultural differences in what scares people and you know from country to country or culture to culture mm-hmm. and. I find the jet what what I find I guess I just find what frightens Japanese people very very interesting. Um, it's always very unsettling to me, and there's a lot of unsettling in this book, and I'm glad I read it. So, um, but I'm gonna need a palate cleanser after this. I finished this last night, and I realized like between that and watching Succession on HBO Succession, um, I'm gonna need something really sweet. You know, I'm gonna need like give me some sweet books. So. <laughs> If sweet. anybody has any recommendations for like just sweet, nice books, put them in the put them in the notes, put them in a comment, and I will I'll gladly pick it up because I need something kind of hunky. What about Becky Chambers' um, series of books on uh, the Monk and Robot series? So oh, okay. Psalm for the Wild Built is the first book, and then prayer for the crown shy i think is the second book i actually like the second book better but they're both I like know. just really sweet short books about okay it's about humanity but it's about a robot learning about humanity i think you know i had this high school english teacher i remember for some reason i read american psycho by brett east and ellis when i was in high school mainly because i I, probably some other cool kid was reading it. And I remember going to my high school English teacher and saying like, God, I just read this like really, it's just that that's a disturbing book. 
um, in, in every possible way. And she, I remember her getting all fussy and saying, oh, Eric, go read The Hobbit, go read The Hobbit, cleanse your palate. <laughs> and so I've that that at 16 I had this like I've always had this idea of a palate cleanser book you know when you've mm -hmm. gone too far into like something right you gotta get a palate cleanser um what are you reading I am still reading Ma and Me um by I never can say her name Putsana Rang um and I think it's because it was my last book of the stack, you know, that I had been reading all at the same time. And so I finally right. gotten back to that book, though I still haven't had, you know, a nice hour to sit and just read. I keep doing it in little tiny chunks, um, which is fine because memoir sometimes can be she's writing in in sort of shorter snippets you know like this is a, a story that her mother told her or this is how she's feeling about this particular you know so they're written in in shorter segments so it's okay but I'm still not totally into the book yet and again I, I think okay. that's reader reader error <laughs> that has nothing to do with right, right. with her um I also did pick up I'm sorry to say another book <laughs> to be reading at the same time um, because, well, I have reasons. But anyway, it's called Praying with Jane Eyre uh, by Vanessa oh. Sultan. Uh, so it's a memoir about like this re reading sacred texts and, and how different books can be sacred texts. She's an she was an atheist pastor, I think. I think that's how they, she said on the, on the book flap, I think that's how they identified her. And she was, you know, walking around doing her rounds for, you know, bringing, I don't know, not prayer and delight, but like, you know, comfort or whatever. And the Bible that she carried around with her was Jane Eyre. <laughs> so she was talking about how to make, you know, any, say any text, any text sacred. And uh, I just started it. So. Interesting. Um, yeah. And then I started since it's January 3rd, I started a new day book because I like having that practice of reading a little snippet of something before I journal in the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, and the last one I had, I had to add it to the books I tasted because I never finished. I went through maybe three or four months of reading it um, as a day book and it just didn't work. Um, and that was, uh, I don't know if I should say it on here, but <laughs> It's the second time I've tried to read that book. So I think maybe I should just let it go. But um, it's one I really okay. wanted it to work. And so I bought it twice. <laughs> but that uh, was Meditations on the Mat. It's kind of a yoga, mm -hmm. a yoga day book, really. Anyway, um, so the new one is uh, The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. I don't know if you know that or not, but I don't. But I I don't I didn't know that what we would call that kind of book and I always have something like that around. Um, I, I mean, so are you talking about like so I just keep a, a there's an issue of poetry magazine sort of everywhere in this house, and if I have five minutes to kill while Elijah's brushing his teeth or something, I will read out of that. It's just something that's there to keep me from picking up a remote control or a device. Mm -hmm. um, or to read in the morning while waiting for the water to boil. It's like kind of that thing where it's like, I like the randomness of like, I'm not, I'm not reading this book to finish it. I'm, I'm reading through it, but I'm not trying to finish it. I'm just, it's here because it's here to present randomness to me. Mm -hmm. Is that what you call a day that, book? That is not what I would call a day book only because maybe, maybe it's, well, this particular day book has like January 3rd. Today I read January oh, 3rd's entry, okay. you know, but other books I've used as like what you're saying, kind of like catching the big fish. Like there's no dates to that. They're just short little tiny essays about creativity and meditation and stuff. So, so yeah, that would be something that that was what I was doing with catching the big fish. So it was called okay. catching yep. the big, yeah, catching the big fish. Fish I need to pull David that off Lynch. the shelf because you keep talking about it and I keep remembering like little fun <laughs> bits from that. There's like a one of those little things is like a clown, a melting ice cream cone, 
a, a 1957 Cadillac. I have no idea what these things have in common, but I I think of them together. Or something. It was just some like rant, like random bunch of stuff that gave you a view into David Lynch's mind. I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk, talk about, about... 24. Yeah, let's talk. So shout out to Chad. Thanks, Chad, for the idea. Um, Thanks, buddy. So we are. So normally when I do. I haven't done my review yet, Eric. So actually, mm. plug again for Patreon. If you are at the level of um, tier level where where this is included, um, tonight I have scheduled, or actually this afternoon, at 4 o'clock I have scheduled um, an end of the year review. So taking a couple hours and going through, you know, all of asking my my end of year review questions um, that I do every year and just looking looking through my planner really and just seeing like what I accomplished and and that sort of thing. And and so I haven't done that yet. That's scheduled for today. <laughs> so I'm kind of going into this um not blind, but just I haven't spent a long time thinking about it yet. Right. But that might make a cool conversation. <laughs> yeah, I did this on Saturday morning. Um, my kid plays Pokemon on Saturday morning, and I just usually go to the cafe or bar that's on either side of the co of the game store where he plays. And either I do some work or I read or this happened to be the time that I sat down and thought like, all right, like what? I was, I don't know. I don't, ref, I don't look back so much on these kind of in this exercise as I look, I try to look forward, but I kind of forced myself this time to really look back at the year and say, all right, like it maybe will help to know where I come, like where, where this goal is coming from, like what gap this goal seeks to fill. So yeah, I did a little of it on Saturday morning. But on an odd note, there was a guy in the bar that I was sitting in and he he needed to be excused from the establishment because of his behavior, hmm. if that's a good way to put it. And so it was a little distracting. One of my goals was not be that guy. So, <laughs> so if I say that, that's why. Um, I've never known you, you to be to that guy. I've never not that guy. But you ever you see, when you see that guy, you say to yourself, OK, what somewhere his life got him there. Mm -hmm. If I don't step out on that branch of the tree, then I won't get there. So um, I think that for me, just I'll kind of throw out there the first, like I, I think for me, I look back at a year and I, I, it's hard for me to see past the accomplishments and the things that worked. Um, but I am by nature, when it comes to this type of thing, very critical of not critical. I am ambitious and um i'm i'm i am creative and so i want to if i have a good year i look back on a good year and say how do i have a you know a better year um and so one of the things i acknowledged about last year versus you know that i wanted to alleviate was um i needed to work smarter and not harder um i have i always have more clients than i can handle you know, the client uptick, you know, it's either, it's either, you know, more responsibility. And so that leads to more work or it's more, it's more, it's either more client servicing or it's more work time. And I I always look at, you know, how do I, so I take that frustration and I try to look at like, what, uh, what can I do in this year to feel a little less constrained by the by the client side of my business and i don't mean this like my client the client side of my business is successful and it's 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 exactly you know it's where i would like it to be i do find myself often like frazzled and so i've i tried to set some goals for 2024 that would say you know i want to work smarter and not harder for sure because i do think there were times in 2023 when my wife and kid would go do something on Sunday and I would sneak off and work for two hours. I don't necessarily want to do that in 2024. I 
looking at 2023, first thing I want to do is acknowledge all the good stuff. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, I'll look past that. Well, that's like my main highlight for doing reflection is to acknowledge and celebrate the wins because yes. I often forget, you know, and that's why I really like this reflection uh, process and, and why I do it every month. Because when you come to the end of the year, you think, well, what did I do all year long? And if you have some sort of written record of in January, I did this. And in February, I did this. You know, you can see the small things that add up to the big wins too. So yes. um, I did publish my memoir um, this year, this Yay. last year, 2023. So that had been like on my docket for many years. And I had kind of fallen out of publishing. And so that felt really good to accomplish. and and was really a large part of actually 2022 also, because I did publish the memoir early on in the year. Um, I also have been thinking a lot about sustainability in business and how to, like you, make, make systems work so that, so that the, so that it fits into a regular life, you know, like we all, especially as self-employed, you know, business owners, it's, it is hard to segregate your business and life. And sometimes we don't want to, but also, like you said, you don't want to necessarily sneak off on a Sunday when you could be with your family and doing some work instead. So yeah, the whole concept of segregating and and not segregating and and the home life balance and and how to how to make it all work so that it is sustainable and there's no burnout and no resentments and you know, no workaholic stuff. So that's been on my mind kind of off and on throughout the year 2023 as well. I don't know that I, I have any like, that... you know, burning like epiphanies from it. Um, I do think that my physical health um, and my mental health are more, I mean, yeah, I'll know that they're related, but still yeah. it takes a couple of like, oh, <laughs> moments where you, you fully integrate that they are related. <laughs> like I need to keep my, I need to keep my physical health you know, premium so that I can have the mental health as right. well. Right. Right. I think you hit on something that I always think about when I do any sort of uh, looking, you know, kind of, I don't know, you can kind of look at these things as like interest. You can look at these things a lot of ways, right? They have a lot of dimensions. And so you can choose to look at them. Um when it comes to running a small business, you can look at them a lot of different ways. And I think one of the things I have to keep always for me, keep myself reminded of is it's wonderful. Like I hear people around the holidays say, Oh, I've got to work the day after Christmas. And Oh, I don't have any PTO. And I hear, you know, I hear that from my friends and, and there's a part of me that says I'm, I can work on a Saturday if I want to have Monday off or I can, I can take Monday off. I can kind of do how I want to do mm -hmm. um, as long as all the the boxes are being checked. But then there becomes a slippery slope of it, if I can work on a Saturday, what stops me from working on any Saturday? Mm -hmm. And so I think that part of the reflection goal setting is always like, you have to balance it all. Like what is really the goal, right? Like if the goal is to, you know, increase income and reduce, you know, sort of friction and work, then you set out on that goal. Like, so I think just having like a, you, you've got to look, you can't look back in a reactionary way. I think that's what happens. That happened to me a lot in business where I would look at, gosh, this is so frustrating. What can I do in an immediate literal sense to solve mm -hmm. this frustration when really it might have been a bigger picture thing. It might have been more of a mindset thing. So I think 
getting out of reactionary is so important um, to to really looking forward in a cre in a creative and res self respectful way. And I that's also a tip hat tip to that idea of mental health, right? If you're driving yourself so hard, you're gonna make yourself miserable. So what do you do uh, to not be in that reactive mode? Do you have tips and tricks? I think it's it's very similar to what we were talking about story, right? Like I have to trust that um, no one decision is going to make or break a business that's now 11 years in success, successful 11 years. Not No one decision I make is going to make or break it. I, that's obviously like there, I, I'm sure I could break this thing if I really wanted to. But if I choose to hire a, let's, let's, for example, one of the things I put on my potential list is like hiring a virtual assistant. I spend three to four hours a week doing stuff that I could hire a virtual assistant to do. And that would free me up to finish more work. That finishing more work would get me paid. And I could do, I could, right? Um, like, I, I have to like, you know, kind of look at that as like, it, it, if that didn't work, if, if it was a disaster, if it would cost more money, if it didn't, it wouldn't make or wouldn't break my business. And if I got value for the, that time, it wouldn't make my business. So taking some of the pressure off of decisions mm. and realize you're making one decision in a hundred decisions as a business person is, I don't know, it just, it makes me feel so much more at ease with the whole process. Like I may hire a virtual assistant in February. And again, I'm putting, this isn't going to save me from myself. It's not going to, but it's also not going to break me if, if in May I look at it and say, this doesn't work. Um, and that's kind of anything, you know, when I look at any of these goals, like I made a bunch of, like, I want to have these lingering projects done by this time. They're not, again, they're not going to make me or break me. Um, they're just part of that continuum. So I think take some pressure off people when you're looking forward. I think that, um, you know, I, I hinted to that um, in December about, I'm still going to be setting goals, but I'm not going to be looking at weekly goals, at least for January. And, and I'm thinking, I want to extend that. I'm already planning on extending that to, to February. So for the first couple of months of the year, I want to just um, you know, as I said last time, aligned action is kind of my, those are my buzzwords for 2024. So I, I want to, I want to be able to, here's the thing. And I know that I've brought this up on the podcast before, so I don't want to like <laughs> repeat myself too much, but I, there was a time in my life, it was 2020, it was 2017, I think. Yeah. 2017 and 2018, where I discovered through a bunch of different things that if I had a master list of things that I would like to accomplish in my business and not have a timeline on them, instead just have like blocks of time during the day that I worked on my business, that I could do anything on that list and still be making forward momentum, still taking action steps, still, you know, having still accomplishing things. And I didn't have the added internal self-imposed stress of a deadline that made it so I wasn't getting my work done if I didn't get the thing on the list done by the date that I arbitrarily set. So I would like to get back to that, that kind of mindset, um, really was helpful. Um, like mental health wise, you know, I, there, I felt better about the things that I did accomplish and therefore I got more stuff done. It seems so counterintuitive to me, but it involved, you know, trusting, trusting myself. And I think this seems to be kind of a buzzword too, that we come up with today. I've, I've been hearing the word trust a lot, trusting in the process, trusting in ourselves, trusting that another idea will come, trusting that, you know, I don't have to make the perfect decision right now because all decisions, you know, work <laughs> like there's no good or bad decision. They all 
they're all learning experiences and we can always make another decision if the first one didn't go according to, you know, the way we thought it would. So, so having this trust in, I can be productive, trust in, I know what intuitively needs to be done in my business. I don't need to be so rigid about, I'm going to finish this by this week and I'm going to work on it on Thursday. I mean, there's some good, there's some good points to doing that. And that's a trick that I've used for years and it does work. And, and I do want to continue to use that as a tool, but I don't want to use it as a crutch. And I feel like that's where I've kind of gotten myself into, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think it, I think, I think that there's this um, temptation that I always have to if I, if I overstress the importance of something, then I'm going to be more likely to get it done. And I've just found that doesn't work. That's not true about me. Um, in fact, I think now I've gotten to a point, and maybe this is just a product of age or a product of, of, of well, I, let's just call it a product of wisdom. Like, let's just hope it's a product <laughs> of wisdom and not something else. But like, um, like, if I put pressure on myself to do something, I'm probably going to resist doing it. And it's probably more of an indication of like, that's really not aligned. Like I I actually thought a lot about your aligned action um, statement when I was sitting down um, on Saturday, when I was not resisting the temptation to watch the train wreck of a person um, (laughs) across the bar from me. Um, I like, I've had, there's some things that are on my list to do list forever. And I keep telling my, I keep reminding myself since you said that, like, this may be that that thing is not aligned with what I really want. And mm-hmm. I'm resisting it that way. So, yeah, I, I think that resisting, I think, I think sometimes like you listen to what you want and try to go in that direction, but also listen to where you're maybe not where you don't want to go. Cause maybe you're, maybe there's some, something there. Mm-hmm. So is there anything yeah. from 2023's list that you have decided to not do for 2024 that still ended up on the Things list? Things from a to-do list, like from the goal list? Yeah. Or, I mean, you can take that to mean whatever you want it to mean. It can be more abstract that- than that. One of the things I didn't, one of the things I'm doing, okay, this is, I'm going to answer this question in the most roundabout Eric possible way. <laughs> I decided that I, I always tear up my to-do list and tear up my sort of like, all right, when I set my December goals, I write it on a, a piece of scratch paper and I put it in the front of the calendar. And then I like throughout January, I'm always looking at that. And when January is done, I move the things I didn't do into February and then I toss it. I decided not to do that this year. Because I can't tell you where my mind was in January 3rd, 2020 or 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, I decided that I was going to write down, I was going to keep all the to-do lists and monthly goal lists and quarterly goal lists in a book. And I wasn't going to tear it up when it was over so that I would be able to look back at a certain point in the year and say, oh, wow, I've been trying to do this since, you know, forever. And now it's still sitting here. Um so I could have that more of that reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that if anything, um, I'm going to kind of leave behind in 2023 is this scat is this scattered feeling of I, I just always have this scattered feeling. Part of what we talked about earlier, you know, always fielding ideas and always filtering them out leaves me sometimes feeling scattered when I need to be practical. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've. I've really made it a focus in 2024 to, you know, sort of measure a little bit more to be more, to, to be more planful about, you know, kind of not just writing something because I want to write it as much as I, I'm going to write something and I know where it fits and I'm willing to pursue it. Um, so I'm challenging myself to be a little more looking long, longer down the road. That's... I don't know if that really addressed your question, but it's where my mind went when you asked it. <laughs> then it's the perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna use that in life later today. I'm sure um, <laughs> that you you always have the perfect answer. No, just like that. Like if it if it's yeah if if it's the answer that I came to naturally, then it's the right an- then it was mm-hmm. the right answer to the question. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I really want to know more about, I really want to know more about like the totality of my ambition and how to, how to focus it. And I'm not going to get that by throwing away to-do lists and, and goal lists. I'm going to, I'm only going to get that when I reflect, I'm able to reflect a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll tell you 2024, like I have had probably on my website to-do list since 2019 is to create like a, some, like create video content for my blogs and my website, because like every, everyone I've ever worked with on my site has said, you know, the site is fun, is really good, but if you had video on, on these blogs, it would boost and, and a, it would really boost them. Um, and um, boy, 2019, I had this conversation. <laughs> um, and in 2024, I'm still sitting here and I, I really need to do that. You know, if that's the next thing I need to do on a website, then why am I chasing my tail doing other things? Um, if I know that's the one thing that will make, that's what I don't listen to enough. I think is like, I really sit, I can sit down with a list of like things to do and I can identify the one that is going to make the most impactful difference. I just don't always do that thing. Just and, knowing I think is fantastic because that's the part that I, that's the part that a lot of people, <laughs> myself struggle included, with? struggle with. Yeah. Knowing what's that one thing. If people knew what the one thing to do to, you know, grow their business, there would be no struggling businesses. So knowing the thing is like oh, every superpower. That's amazing. Is, uh... You could write a blog every week and that will be good. You could create 15 videos for your 15 highest ranking blogs on your site. And that would be tremendous. And every time I hear that, I think, all right, we're going to do this. And then I just, I don't. And that might be because it doesn't align with my values or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, it might be that it's something I've never done. And so I have a bit of trepidation about, you know, taking that step. I don't know. I, I just, I, but I, it is in my list. It was like the first thing I wrote down for quarter one, 2024 is basically like, you know, do it or get off the pot. You know, like you just, it, it, you can't sit here in this space for five years and know you should do something and not do it. It's like, you know, it's like that whole gym thing. If you don't go to the gym you know, every day, you don't go to the gym, the next day gets harder. So it's either do it or don't. All right. So well, you know, hopes for 2024, you know, looking forward, I, I, my hope is to, you know, I want to, I want to work smarter and not harder. That means a business that's as successful with less grind. I think there's, for me, there's a lot, always a lot of resistance, you know, with time and, and expectations. I want to lessen some of that. Um, I, I really need to take the next step as a, publishing author. I really feel like, you know, a, a lot of the goals I made were, you know, get those print books out, get find bigger audiences, um, meet, meet more of, you know, readers. And I think last, and, and it, it, it's just evolving that, that community that has been a thorn in my side for years. Like I have not found a, a real effective way to embrace the writer community and so, and expand my connection to the writer community. And so I'm really hopeful of branching out, you know, going to Alaska last year was great. I met a bunch mm. of people. Um, I still have conversations with a few of them. Uh, I need more of that. It's, yeah. it's important. So what about you? Look forward. Give me three things. Um, I quite like the teaching and, um, conferencing as well. So I'm going to continue pitching that. Um, I do want to get back to fiction. I have an idea. I'm also like, I haven't looked at the idea for six months. So I'm kind of like, Oh, I don't know if I like that or not anymore. <laughs> so I want to revisit the idea and, um, and yeah, write a novel. I just want to get back to writing a novel. However, I do have several nonfiction books that are almost written, you know, that, that kind of all fit into a, a, a series, a nonfiction series, um, for writers. So I want to right. get those. I mean, that'd be so easy to publish because they're already really written. So yeah, 
those are kind of my, my goals. And of course, you know, keeping it with aligned action. So maybe that can be like a little piece of homework for you and I is to like, think about what our values are and, and, and that way we know that any decision we make, right. if it's going to be aligned with our, with our business values, but also because we're, you know, parts of families also, and we're thinking long-term trajectory, you know, our, our personal values have to be part of that too. Right. Right. I like that challenge. Let's do it. I like it. Okay. Let's do it. Well, I will see you next week then, Eric. See you next week. And uh, maybe I will come with a question for you. Oh, gosh. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll like try it. to, I'll come up with I'll... a question to ask you for, for next week. Okay. Love All right. It. Bye for now. See you then.